I've got three 12 by 12 wood boards. This one is a, just a panel. Um, it's just a quarter inch panel. And um, I have two other ones that have, um, that are cradled, what they call cradled, and they have an edge to them. So what I'm going to do with this one, and I think I probably did it with these two, is I'm going to mount this panel onto a cradle board that is the same as this one. So they're, all three of them will be the same uh, look. Um, this is the other one. So you can see that there's kind of a, oops, kind of a um, theme going on here. Uh, I do tend to work in series of at least three, and these three are what I've got going right now. So you can tell that I have um, the same palette and sort of the same ideas going on. Each one is slightly different, but nonetheless. So, ooh. Sorry, I have to reach. I'm in my 100 square foot studio, <laughs> surrounded by uh, the video camera on my table. So I'm gonna try not to shake my table. And then I have a light, um, <laughs> light box to my right shoulder. So I'm, I'm limited to this little space and I hope that you can um, appreciate uh, the view. So um, I thought I'd start with this one. This one, uh, all three of these were, were old paintings that just weren't working. And so I started out by sanding them down and there was a lot of collage on there. So that was really, gave me lots to react to. Um, I don't even remember what was on this one. I can't even, I don't think I can see anything from the original um, painting, which is fine. <clears throat> um, it's all about just a process of, you know, call and response. So I sanded it and then I saw it a whole different way. Um, there was a lot of texture. So I just started glazing and just kind of went from there. I, I don't know how many passes I've done on these, probably five or six. So now I'm at the stage where I'm getting some definition, but I'm, you know, I'm trying to uh, decide what to show and what to get rid of. <laughs> as well as um, I've started to put some collage in here. And I love collage. Um, often I put collage in too early and then I just end up covering it, but it always it always is beneficial regardless because it then it acts like um, texture. Um, so I like that effect too. So what I've got on here is, um, <laughs> this used to be an old scarf of mine that I loved, loved, loved. And it just got to the point where it was, had its better days. So I decided, it's a very fine cotton, and I decided this would make great collage. So I've got all these beautiful pieces, and I'm just so in love with this. And it turns out that these paintings really work with what's on these patterns. So I'm just kind of going through and choosing some, some pieces that, will, that I can incorporate into the painting. Um, so, for example, this piece here, this sort of darker gray and black piece, um, this is part of the uh, fabric collage. And I don't know if you can see, but underneath that used to be some red and then white, I think. So you get a sense of the history behind what's happened. And then I've put some little polka dots over the top of this just to get get the layering thing going on. Um, this, up in this corner, I put some paper collage, which was a rubbing from um, a tin. I'm just gonna reach across here, I have to show you this. This is an old tin that I found in a secondhand store. And I was thrilled, of course, I saw, <laughs> I, just, I just saw, oh, that's something I could use in my studio. And so I've been starting to make some prints on the jelly plate and and um, that one that I have in this painting is not made on the jelly plate. It's actually a rubbing um, done on just some plain um, printer paper. 
So I like the rubbing effect and I just put a little bit in there. And so I'm gonna probably come back. This is all very busy in this corner, so I'll have to choose what I want to show. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, so certain things show up in my paintings, uh, which is a result of just paying attention to what I, you know, what fires me up, what, what do I like. Um, trees are a big thing, and I, I've just got a little sort of abstracted, you may or may not be able to tell that's a tree. Um, I like s shapes with stencils, certain shapes. I like this um, scribble uh, lines and or scraping into the paint. Um, there are a million things you could do and it's all about what it is for you that would be uh, feel really good to put down. So I've got another piece of this uh, just just to demonstrate the um, application of this fabric and I was looking at this thinking I might want to put it there. It's quite close to this but it is different. Um, so the great thing about collage as many of you know already is um, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's so uh, nice to be able to try it in different places. And this goes for paper collage as well. Um, you can just look at it, see how it looks in a particular place and then move it around till it feels right, which is what I'm doing here. Um, it's not quite, that was the most likely place but I'm just feeling like oh maybe I shouldn't put it there and again there's that limiting shouldn't uh, however um kind of like that little red peeking out there in this design so it could be that the fabric is actually overlapping another piece of fabric which is fine because uh, they're different but look at this fine little beautiful pattern and this all, all leaves and all kinds of botanical, you know, uh, sort of representations. Yeah, I don't really, it doesn't really matter if that one shows, but maybe I'll just put it down like that. Okay, so what I use for this, I use also for heavier paper, um, and this fabric is uh, just gel ma ma uh, matte medium. Matte medium, that's what most people call it. Um, it's just thicker than gloss medium. So it comes in a big jar like this and I use a little silicone brush to put it on with. It works really well uh, for a lot of things for paint too. And then I'm just, you know, once I put it there, I just have to reimagine where that area was so I can just put a gob of this stuff on. I want to put enough so that I'm going outside where I think the um, piece of fabric is, is going to go, just to make sure I've got it right to the edge. So you can be pretty generous because this is cotton and it's quite absorbent. So I will try this and let's see, I, I just think I decided I'm going to leave the red on the right and then just put it underneath this red on the left. So you can just kind of poke it down to the position you want it. And it's if it's wrinkly, you have to sort of stretch it out as you put it on or pull it. And just, you know, great having gloves on because this does get pretty sticky. So I'm just kind of pressing it down, my just gently with my finger, just to see if that's gonna work. I think that works okay. I mean, and the thing is, you can even paint over this, so I'm not worried that, oh, I'm gonna put it down and then I'm stuck with it. Um, I can just paint over it and then it becomes texture, uh, which adds to the painting as well. So now you may, you may be thinking in your mind, oh no, I wouldn't have put it there. I would have put it, you know, somewhere else, which is good because I, I hope you're thinking like that because I want you to be thinking that of things that you would do because this is really about uh, you uh, finding your own way. Now I think that's a little blob of something. We don't want that on there. 
Okay, so let's just get this down. Now, of course, this takes longer to dry than paper does, so you have to be a little more patient. And that's the benefit of working in a series is that um, you you can uh, your paintings can dry in between as you go from one painting to the other. So now you see how that's sort of incorporating as I sort of flatten it out more and more. It's really incorporating itself into the painting and certainly over overlapping that um, other piece of fabric. I love, I don't know if you can see here, but there's these little fibers from the bottom piece of fabric that are, I, I know I sort of pulled it out from the sides and I really like that effect, especially right there, sort of, a, it's like a scribble, but it's, but it's a thread. <laughs> so it's just a different um, medium. Okay, so I'm going to just wipe the excess off a little bit so we don't have all this, whoops, all this gummy medium everywhere. And plus you want it to dry as fast as it can. Okay, so there is just one example. Um, I'm not gonna go on and on. I might make a few short videos rather than just one long one because it gets a little tedious. I know people, you know, got things to do. So, but I'm just, I'm sort of planning, like because I'm at the collage stage, I've been going through my collage and looking to see what I have. So um, reds, I'm, I may not need more red. Um, I've got all kinds of things. All these I've made on the jelly plate and that can be a whole nother discussion. It is so much fun. Um, I found this piece, which is sort of a blue gray and I really like that. And it's very simple. It's just got some scratch lines in it. Um, uh, this one also is beautiful. Uh, it's got some iridescent silver on it. And um, this is, this is mulberry paper, it's very soft. And this would be really nice to incorporate into a painting. It's got lots of little texture on it. So I really like that one. Um, one I just made with circles. I've got, there is some sort of flesh color or pinkish tone in some of these. So this might work better for one of the other ones that has this color um, or not. So it's just a matter of, like I say, trying things seeing what works. Um, of course, the faithful uh, bubble wrap makes great. Um, you can put that directly on the painting, just put the bubble wrap in paint and then press it onto the painting. But here I've done, um, uh, I've pressed it onto tissue with the jelly plate, whoops. Uh, the reason it's so handy having it on tissue is because you've got, you get a stock, a supply, of different textures and colors, etc., And then you've got so much to work with when you're starting out uh, to make it another project. Lots of choices, you want lots of choices. So that's kind of, and I've got a little piece of that, um, I might put that on because um, it's just a little piece of that uh, rubbing. And so I will just put that one on and then I will, close up. So you, so now I have it up here. So you don't want to put it like right beside it. Um, kind of looking at the whole painting, this is darker value down here, darker value here, here, here. And I may be coming in with some white to pull off these dark shapes off the edge. Uh, often that's what happens when I'm painting is I put my, my shapes end up all around the edge, which I don't know why, but um, it's just a matter of correcting. So I'm looking around and I'm kind of going, well, that would sort of incorporate into that. You wouldn't even be able to see it until you're like close up. But can we overlap it into the green maybe? That'd be kind of better. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's just a little piece. And like I say, later on, if you don't like it, you can just paint over it or paint over part of it. I know sometimes when I put down a piece of collage um, and then later on, I don't really like the angle of it. It feels too, too resistant uh, relative to whatever else it's beside. And so I'll just paint over it so that it creates negative space. And so it's really easy. So 
that's not really anything huge, but it's just a little detail and it brings, it echoes what's going on here. You know, the viewer can sort of recognize that this is a another shape, sort of, or not another pattern, sort of like that, different shape. So there we go. So I would just let that dry for now. I have to let this, uh, this fabric dry for sure. And um, I'm going, next part, I'm going to come in with some paint because if I start now, I'll, I'll keep going for like 10 minutes. Um, but I can see areas on this one where uh, I need to uh, make it a little quieter, not so um, busy. This corner especially. Um, so I will, uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for coming. And don't, don't forget, if you don't mind, to subscribe to my channel. I think I've got 65 subscribers now. And it's so exciting to know that somebody out there is actually watching my video and hopefully getting something out of it. So I really appreciate that. Thanks. See you next time.